Today, we've received even more reason to believe that the Hunter Biden emails talked about by the New York Post are in fact true, and that Joe Biden knew quite a bit more about Hunter Biden's business dealings than he's letting on, and maybe he even got paid for them. This is coming from Tony Bobulinski, who is confirming that emails are in fact true, and that he was an email recipient of at least some of them. He was a former business partner of Hunter Biden, and so he probably knows a thing or two about what was going on. So let's just jump right into the story and see what new information we have. Tony Bobulinski confirms that he was one of the recipients of the May 13th email published by the Post a few days ago. The email from another partner in the group laid out cash and equity positions and mysteriously included a 10% set aside for the big guy. If you're not familiar with this part of the story, there was an email that included a proposed equity split reference, 20% for H, which is presumably standing for Hunter Biden, and 10% held by H for the big guy. So H, Hunter Biden, was setting aside 10% for someone else. Now, it was speculated that this big guy was Joe Biden, and that's what Tony Bobulinski is confirming. He said the email is genuine, and that the former vice president and the man leading in the 2020 race is indeed the big guy. What kind of corroborates this story a little bit more rather than just an email is a text message that supposedly Hunter Biden sent to his daughter saying that unlike Pop, referring to Joe Biden, I won't make you give me half your salary. Both of those things together, one of which at least is now confirmed by an external source, that kind of paints a picture that not only did Joe Biden know what was going on, but he was benefiting financially from these business dealings, which is completely different from what he's been saying for years. Continuing on, Tony said that I've seen Vice President Biden saying he never talked to Hunter about his business. I've seen firsthand that's not true because it wasn't just Hunter's business. They said they were putting the Biden family name and its legacy on the line. Now, he's coming forward now because he's been reading these emails and he realized that he was kind of stabbed in the back, according to what he's saying here. He says that he realized the Bidens had gone behind my back and gotten paid millions of dollars by the Chinese, even though they told me they hadn't and wouldn't do that to their partners. So if what Tony is saying is true, not only did Joe Biden get presumably millions of dollars from China and other foreign companies, but they also stabbed their own business partner in the back and lied to him about receiving the money in the first place which, you know, is not a thing you should do as a business partner. If you want to see his entire statement, you can look on this article from the New York Post and it goes over essentially what Tony Bobulinski says about these emails. I do want to highlight the conclusion of his statement where he says, I don't have a political ax to grind. I just saw behind the Biden curtain and I grew concerned with what I saw. The Biden family aggressively leveraged the Biden family name to make millions of dollars from foreign entities, even though some were from the communist controlled China. Now, even before these emails started leaking, we kind of already knew that Hunter Biden was making quite a lot of money from doing nothing because he doesn't really have any marketable experiences. At least working for Burisma didn't make any sense and he was making at least $50,000 a month. And it was obvious that he was using the Biden family name to make money. But the allegations now are saying not only did Joe Biden know about it and pretend that he didn't, but he may have actually made money from it. According to the email we saw previously, he made 10% of the dealings when Hunter Biden made 20%. If those allegations turn out to be true and we can verify it, maybe by looking at Joe Biden's bank statements or something, that would be a huge deal. Now, I do want to point out, as I have multiple times already, the hypocrisy of the media. Have they have covered or failed to cover this story, but they were more than willing to cover the most absurd stories about President Trump as if it were fact. Take, for example, one of the most ridiculous stories that you heard from the Steele dossier, which was the fact that apparently President Trump paid Russian prostitutes to pee on furniture. And no, I'm not making that up. That is actually a thing that some people were claiming happened. Even if you didn't believe it, it was allowed to go forward on Twitter, on Facebook, on all of these different places. And yet this story about Hunter Biden that is significantly more verified, that has not only anonymous sources saying it's true, but now we have someone who is willing to put his name on it saying it's true, that is still being somewhat suppressed by Twitter and Facebook. Just to be clear, Russian prostitutes peeing on furniture, that's fine. But these allegations, which are significantly more important and damning, well, they're not acceptable, even though they've been verified by a number of people. And yes, some of them were anonymous, but that's still verified. Now, I'm not saying without a shadow of a doubt that they are true. I don't know if that's the case. But I'm leaning more towards that there's an inkling of truth here than anything to do with Russiagate or any of that other nonsense. And I do want to point out that this week, Joe Biden has essentially said he's not going to talk about it. On Monday, several days ago, he called the lid saying that he's not really going to do anything until after the presidential debate on Thursday. Essentially, that is buying him four complete days of doing nothing and talking to nobody. 
Now, sure, it's possible some of that has to do with preparing for the debate, as Joe Biden's camp has said, but I think it's much more likely that he's just trying to hide from this story in the hopes that it'll blow over. But the more time passes, the more it seems like it's true, so that's not really working for Joe Biden. So now that we're caught up to date on this case, I want to highlight what I think is the worst case scenario. Now, many conservatives would really like Joe Biden to be guilty of this. They want this to be true because they don't like Joe Biden and they think he has been corrupt and you're entitled to your opinion. But in my opinion, the worst case scenario would be that this turns out to be true only after Joe Biden is already sworn in as president. Because if that were to happen, he would be forced to resign or he would be impeached without a doubt and then would get President Kamala Harris. And that is a very disturbing thought. I don't like Joe Biden. I disagree with him on virtually every policy. Yet he would be significantly better as a president than Kamala Harris ever would be. Just consider the fact that even the Democrats didn't want Kamala Harris. She had to drop out of the Democratic primary before any of the caucuses because she was doing so horrible. People did not like her for good reason. Just think about her. It was a debate clip. That is horrifying. So as much as I dislike Biden, if he is elected president, I'm actually going to hope that this isn't verified enough to get him impeached because I'd much rather have a Joe Biden president with this hanging around his neck than a Kamala Harris president. However, if we find out this is true undeniably within the next few weeks before the election actually occurs, well then that would be okay because then I think Donald Trump would certainly win. It still wouldn't be a good thing that the vice president was so inherently corrupt that he was making millions of dollars off of foreign companies, but I mean, at least we could prove that it had happened. But at least we could prove it had happened. It wouldn't just be speculation at that point. Anyway, those are just my thoughts on this newest breaking piece of the New York Post story. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the news just like this. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.